Okay, time for an EcoBoost update. Uh, some of you folks have been following me on this car. It had started with a uh, Eco Boom, so it blew up the original 2.3. It was a 2018 model. I think it had the weaker rods in it. Uh, looks like that's what let go. It was a formal rental car. I'm sure it was beat on pretty good before we got it. But anyway, uh, so we rebuilt. Uh, you see on my other videos, I put an Esslinger Stage 3 short block with all the good stuff in it, forged everything. Brand new head. A Precision Turbo, the EcoBoost Turbo. Uh, really nice, larger, catted down pipe. The big uh, CVX intercooler. Uh, I get this open. Hard to do one-handed. Put the uh, custom performance intake. from day one with turbo smoke. Now, I've just gone out and I've flogged this car hard. I've driven it about two hours today. And uh, I have finally solved my turbo smoke problem. And hopefully this will help some other people that have gone to the larger turbo. Uh, I went the full route of catch cans and everything to do with the PCV system uh, still had smoke. I did a uh, actually had a turbo replaced. The original Precision Turbo uh, was in the serial numbers that had a bad bearing or a bearing issue. And I thought, well, you know, that's the problem. Well, it wasn't the problem. That the car still smoked. And I uh, was really about ready to give up and put the original turbo charger back on it. So I decided to do a leak down test. Uh, the compression tests were always good, so I thought maybe I've got a leak down problem. And if you guys have done a leak down test and compression test, you know what these numbers will mean to you. I mean, super good compression, uh, virtually no leak down. Uh, so that proved that the short block was solid, the heads were solid. I did have some concerns about valve stem seals. Uh, even went through the pain of changing the valve stem seals. I think it was unnecessary, but anyway, everything's good. I've gone out and flogged it hard. Uh, turbo smoke problem is finally completely gone. So what did I do? All right. The original turbo chargers are a journal bearing design, right? So the precision turbo is a ball bearing design. And with all the reading, the many forums, the many posts uh, about these turbo chargers, I've learned a lot. But you don't need near the pressure that this little four cylinder, the oil pressure is sending to that turbo charger. So step one is I added this regulator to bring the pressure down. Still smoke. Uh, I did away with all my catch can system because I figured let's, let's just go back to square one. So I just put a check valve in and did away with the catch cans. I am going to put a catch can back on. Uh, so I kept working with this and restricted the oil flow. So I put in a uh, 0.035 restrictor. Still smoke. Uh, it was less. It was a lot less. So I felt like I was on the right track. I was scared to go much less. Afraid I would toast the, the turbo. Uh, 
I don't really have a lot of information from Precision Turbo about what the proper pressure and oil should be. So my me next line of thought with all the posts and everything that I've read is, you know, maybe my oil drain wasn't big enough. My drain pipe coming out of the turbo. This is the factory setup and the Precision Turbo is set up to use this factory connection. Well, everything I've read with ball bearing turbos is you need a minimum of 0 0.60 uh, this, you know, the orifice size basically. Uh, so I almost went to that step in changing it. Uh, it looked like it'd be a pain. I couldn't find any kit to do this. I was going to have to fabricate something. But the more I looked at it, I mean, there's not a lot you can do here unless you pull the turbocharger, pour it out, thread it. And then I looked at the old block uh, that had blown up. And where this drains in to the, to the block, you've got a bore that is, you know, fairly thick going through the block. And it's this size. So even if I increased this pipe size, I still had this size orifice in the block. I still have this size orifice coming out of the turbocharger. So I kept reading online and said I was almost to the point of just pulling the turbo off, putting the stock turbo back on and say to hell with it, but uh, it just kept bugging me. So I did find one thread where an individual with a precision turbo put a .028 uh, orifice or restrictor. Uh, so I found an NOS nitrous oxide 0 .028 restrictor at a local uh, performance shop, and and I put it in. And uh, I was like, well, you know, if the turbo is going to burn up, it's going to burn up because I'm not going to keep driving around blowing smoke everywhere. So my restrictor is in that fitting that goes into the top of the turbo charger. So now I have the 0 .028 zero smoke. Will the turbo survive? I guess we'll see. I've gone out, I've flogged it for two days and I, I feel like if it was gonna toast, it would toast. But uh, even the, uh, uh, I see a little bit of smoke right there. It's been sitting here idling for about 10, 15 minutes. Uh, the uh, I see that the shade coming out of the tailpipe is actually starting to lighten up. So I'm gonna pull the plugs, take a good look at them. I ran it hard, so if, if something was gonna give, if this wasn't a fix, it would have been evident. But uh, hopefully this helps some folks. Uh, every car is different. I'm just telling you what I did. Now you go put a .028 restrictor on your precision turbo and it burns up, I'm sorry. I mean, I, I'm not telling you to do it. I'm just telling you what worked on this car. I can say this car runs like a bat out of hell for what it is. And I did a 112 mile drive today uh, before I flogged it. I wanted to see, I had, I had to drive to, to, uh, to pick up item a uh, pretty good distance so I want to see what it would do and I got 35 miles to the gallon so 500 horsepower to the flywheel with a 6400 rpm uh, set on it it won't go past that because it's running out of fuel I'm not gonna spend the money to take it any further uh, it's fun it runs great so I'm leaving it alone and uh, finally get some mileage out of this car. But uh, there again, where can you get 500 horsepower at the flywheel? Dyno proven. Uh, and 33, 34 miles to the gallon if you keep your foot out of it. I, that's a pretty good combination. So uh, if the turbo toasts, I'll make another video. If not, I'm done with this car. Good luck, everybody. See you.